Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and a miscellaneous VR video for August 7th. Going to have a news video after this that I will be posting. Uh, it will cover news events from the last two days because I had just a... Let's just say it was an adventure, right? I am freaking happy to be back home. Love living in the burbs. Love my man cave. Had a fantastic time in New York. Don't get me wrong. But holy hell, what a sea of humanity. And uh, Vancouver, where I live, can get busy. You know, the 2010 Winter Olympics, we had massive throngs. But those massive throngs are just part of daily life in New York City. So we stayed in the Midtown area. And like I said, it, if you love food, you're a foodie. Holy hell, New York is just awesome. Shopping, awesome. Uh, just diversity of cultures. You cannot beat New York City. It's fantastic. And I love melting pot cities like that, right? The flip side of the coin, though, is, look, I'm an introvert. And there'll be some of that in the news video. I'll talk about that. But part of that is I just don't do well in massive crowds of people. I'm okay. I can do it for a few hours, right? Just like I'm, I love giving presentations. It's the mingling afterwards that I have a problem with, right? Uh, I love getting in front of people and talking. Uh, you know, videos like this, which is even more than just a handful of people, no problem at all. But if I had to get off the stage and then mingle with you guys individually after, that would drain the living crap out of me. And I would probably need about two days to decompress and just charge up again because I find that very stressful and quite frankly, freaky to have to do that right so madison or sorry Times square wow did you you feel the pulse of everything around you it is fantastic like i said i'm going to say that again to hammer home to visit but if you don't do well in crowds yeah you're you're not going to spend a lot of time there right but just two three blocks away you get peace and quiet. And that is what I love about New York City. I noticed even the busiest spots had a quiet corner tucked one, two, three blocks away, city blocks, small blocks. And it was like you were in a different world, right? So fantastic for that. I am happy to say that the stereotypical cabbies lived up to their reputation. Let's just put it this way. The Uber drivers we used probably because it's their own vehicle they're not leasing or well maybe they are some of them but they seem to drive a little less haphazardly is that a polite way to say it whereas the new york cabbies were no less effective right in fact they probably got places quicker but holy hell do they have a disregard for rules of the road <laughs> and general safety these guys were we had one guy it was literally i felt like i was in a race car if there was a free piece of road space, this dude found it. We were weaving in and out on bike lanes, uh, you know, dodging in front of people. And if you don't live in an area where there's a lot of horn honking, yeah, you are definitely going to notice in Vancouver. We or in uh, New York, I mean. In Vancouver, we use horn honking to basically, you know, alert people. It's a lot of defensive driving, right? Obviously, we also use it when we're pissed off, like a screw you, buddy, honk, honk. In, in New York City, it's almost always reactive honking. And it, it's almost like it's a language unto itself, right? With different amounts of honks. It kind of reminded me of Europe in that way because Europeans are like that too, uh, depending on where you go. So, yeah, probably took a few years off of my life between that and the delayed flight schedule yesterday. <laughs> it was absolutely crazy. But... Let's get into some VR chat, guys. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about that have been discussed in the comment section the last few weeks. I'll, you know, as I mentioned in another video, a miscellaneous video or channel direction, these are the types of things I'm going to touch on from time to time, basically comments that you guys have, questions, concerns, and address them in a video like this. Uh, but still try to keep it uh, VR focused is, is my goal. So the first thing I want to talk about is lenses. And... I'm a guy who has a lot of hobbies. Uh, you guys know I'm into retro gaming, arcade building, right? Uh, gaming in general. I love RPGs, anime, manga, you name it. I'm into all of that. But I'm also an amateur astronomist. Uh, I love amateur astronomy. 
And in amateur astronomy, we always have a joke. And well, firstly, it's look, with all of those hobbies that I mentioned, I call myself a jack of all trades, right? Master of none, because I'm by no means an expert in any one area, not even close. But in astronomy, anyone who does amateur astronomy, we know that, look, when they advertise magnifying power on a store, department store telescope, it's guaranteed pretty much to be a crappy telescope. Turn around and run in the other direction. Do not buy it because telescopes aren't about magnifying power, at least not mostly. They are about light gathering power. And that is usually based on the diameter of the lens or mirror, depending on the type of telescope, right? If it's Schmidt Cassegrain refractor, uh, reflector. Okay. Where this ties into virtual reality is you take your HTC Vive and your Oculus Rift, they are using essentially the same Samsung screen technology. And yet the visual experience in both is dramatically different. Why is that? The main reason is the lens design that each opted to use. We're going to start with the HTC Vive. I'm going to hold the lens up to the camera. And if I can get just the right angle, and there we go. If you look at the bottom lens, right, the eyepiece there, you'll see rings of circles, okay? That is a clear, clear giveaway that the Vive uses what's called a Fresnel lens design, which has advantages, but it also has disadvantages. Compare that to the Rift. I'm not going to bother showing you. Uh, it doesn't have those because it does not use a standard Fresnel design. It uses a hybrid and again, that also comes with advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about what some of those advantages and disadvantages are. With the HTC Vive, using the Fresnel design, it limits what's called in amateur astronomy and basically anything to do with optics or light, chromatic aberration. And holy shit, complicated word, agreed, very technical but it basically talks about, or it has to do with the ability to resolve points of light, right? And not have that lens flare or ray of God type effect. The Vive is very good at limiting that because of the design of the lens being Fresnel. The weakness of the Fresnel, uh, Fresnel design is that and let's use Elite Dangerous as an example. If you line up HUD text for Elite Dangerous near the center of the lens, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in a previous video, but let's bring it all together here. And then you also have purposely put text near the perimeter. It doesn't matter how you dial in the interpupillary distance knob on the Vive. You can make it a bit clearer, but it's always going to be blurrier, that text on the perimeter, than it is dead center because of the Fresnel design. That's a hardware limitation you can't get around it, okay? The other thing that the Fresnel, because of that resolving ability, being better for chromatic aberration and stuff, it tends to not hide the screen door effect as well as, say, the Rift, right? But, okay, so I mentioned a couple of disadvantages. What are the advantages, Epix? Well, the advantage with the Fresnel design is exactly that, limiting that light scatter. So images in general are going to be clearer crisper than they would on a rift on a rift they're always going to look in comparison right not standalone necessarily but in comparison more washed out a bit more dull not as vibrant but the advantage of the rift is text like i just talked about with elite dangerous is going to be uniform throughout text at center versus text near the perimeter uniform both are equally legible right so those pros and cons are going to vary from game to game, which is why I always say for me, it's about the game, the technology that lets me experience that specific game the best way possible. It's why I bought both. It's why I'll buy the PSVR and the Samsung and probably an OS VR. Actually, the OS VR is probably going to be the first unit I get with that tracking thing uh, for Vive down the pipe as a possibility. So just remember that. There's pros and cons to each, but that is the main reason, right? That's the differentiator between the two. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the screen. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else in the structural design 
to the same degree as it has to do with the lens. And that's the bottom line. So just wanted to get that out there. I thought that was an important thing and it's not something I had touched on specifically. And I don't see too many places touch on. That's why I mention it here. Now the next topic has to do with computer parts. And I've mentioned in videos before where I say, look, you can save yourself some money, uh, you know, building the system yourself over buying it fully assembled. And that needs some clarification because A, that's not always the case. You can spend the same or more, much more <laughs> building it yourself, but you get ultimate control over every single component of your virtual reality PC down to the things that with vendors are going to be proprietary, right? Alienware, perfect example. They have a set number of case designs you can choose from. When you build your own, you don't have that limitation. If the motherboard fits, and I wasn't gonna go, it must have quit, you could pick literally any case to put that in, right? There's factors how tall your video cards or how long they are to make sure, but by and large, you have way more selection. You can save if you buy your parts smartly. And when I talk about that and I didn't clarify, I should have specified, look, if you're ordering from places like Newegg, large online vendors, they typically don't have the same large profit margins that a mom and pop shop's going to have because they're mostly concerned with volume, right? They won't have 30 points on a video card, points just being margin, right? They might have five or 10. So buying off one of these vendors, NCIX, Newegg, Amazon, is ultimately gonna get you almost wholesale prices in a lot of times, right? Or very close because these companies literally five, 10% is it. That's the margin they have on these parts, right? You get the flexibility, you may spend the same and hell yeah, you may even spend more, but ultimately you get way more flexibility and way more decision-making uh, in terms of what you're going to include in it. And, that, and of course, the most important being you're learning something, right? Because while you may be spending your time initially, which is worth something, all of our time is, down the road, that becomes something you're experienced at. It's gonna become something that you can do quicker. And you can also start building on that, doing things yourself repair-wise that you may go to a Geek Squad person for right at Best Buy to fix for you. Trust me, guys, those prices are not cheap for what they do. When you start seeing stuff like virus scans or update person's antivirus, 60 to $100, it literally preys on the sheep. The people who either have, they're swimming in so much money they couldn't be bothered and could care less, right? You know, same mentality as bringing your car in for an oil change instead of changing it yourself. It's no different here. So same thing. Uh, and, and that's the part to remember is you get that experience, you can start doing those repairs yourself. You're going to learn more and you will recoup those costs in different areas down the road. So it's not just about the price you save building it. It may be more, but down the road, you're going to save some money. Definitely. Uh, and certainly build your experience portfolio. All right, guys, that's it for the miscellaneous video. Going to be back with a news video. I should have that ready within the next hour or so of you guys seeing this appear online. As always, guys, cheers, and we will see you on the flip side.